Hey. <laughs> Welcome to my giant greenhouse. This was already on site set up, so this is just an incredible blessing that we are able to take advantage of. And this is where the Peruvian corn was grown last year. The giant, you know, 16 feet tall, giant Peruvian corn that is purple speckled from the, you know, the highland mountain valleys of Peru. Incredibly rare corn. I, I didn't know it was so rare that it was impossible to grow in North America when I grew it. I just knew that it was photoperiodic. So I set it up so it would have the right conditions on my site. I applied microclimate thinking from permaculture design training, and I was able to grow it in my climate the first time. Experts had said it was impossible. That's why I call it impossible purple speckled Peruvian corn. And it's a land race, so there's lots of amazing variation in it. And so I'm planting it again this year in this greenhouse and outdoors, because it's always better when it's just outdoors doing its thing. So I'm clearing an area, you'll have to see me do that. I'm gonna clear this area, I'm gonna plant this corn outside. Now, I'm planting it on the, the side of a barn under a tree where it gets morning light into early afternoon and then it shuts off, it's shaded. It's exactly the photoperiodic time, peri time frame that fits with the plant's or original climate, original environment so that it will most likely behave. Now I say most likely because I've seen some crazy things happen. <laughs> Let me not lose this corn. I've seen crowns of corn cobs on the top of the plant so that tassels on top are surrounded by a crown of corn ears. Now, this is something I've only seen a few times, but it can happen. And that's what happens when you adapt corn from the opposite side of the world. And the reality is most of the corn variety came from Mexico and Peru in North, like oh, forever. <laughs> We've created some varieties in North America, independent of that, but most of the variation, the origination of corn comes from those areas and those cultures. So this brings back genetics. This brings back a tradition of bringing genetics up from South America, up from Central America, to rejuvenate the genetics of the North American corn. So that's what I'm doing, bringing it back, bringing back purple speckles from Peru. And it's a big corn, it's a fat corn, it's a flower corn. And it can be spiky, um, it can be all sorts of things. I'll show you a close up here in a second. But it's, it's an incredible corn that I just am crazy about. So you might like it too. I don't know if anyone's selling it anymore, but you can find it. You can get it when you're in Peru. It'll have an adapted seed line available for sale eventually, hopefully in a, in a few more seasons. And I'll have people growing it all over America and we'll combine those genetics with little bits from everywhere and we'll move it continuously northward. So perhaps even someday in Canada, because it's very hard to grow corn in Canada. They have only a few rare Native American varieties. Um, we'll be able to do this there. So this has actually, in the first year of adapting it, moved 30 days earlier. So when you talk about seed maturity, that's just mind blowing. So we're moving things fast, we're adapting quickly, and uh, there's more to come. So stay tuned. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And plant some Peruvian corn. <laughs>